and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are talking about becoming a sustainable florist. Before we get started, if you are new here, my name is Chelsea Fuss. I am a floral designer of over 20 years, a flower arranging author, and I'm the owner of Frolic Flower School, and that is my online classroom to teach sustainable floristry to students around the world. We also have live offerings right now we are um, just underway with our fall flower school. So on this channel, I offer free flower workshops, tutorials, and mentorship about becoming a florist. So if that does interest you, please hit the subscribe button. And let's get started with today's topic about becoming a sustainable florist. So I wanna talk about three or four big points to get you started. Um, so first of all, a lot of people just are not aware of what it means to be a sustainable florist. A lot of people don't even understand that for many years we've had very harmful uh, practices in floristry. One of the biggest ones being floral foam. It's essentially a plastic product that florists have used for decades to hold stems in place. Now, a lot of us who have been designing in a naturalistic way for decades rarely used it. And the problem with floral foam is that it takes over 500 years to break down, right? So it's a plastic product. There's really no reason to be using it, okay? My personal philosophy is that flowers are so beautiful as they are, you really don't need to manipulate them or contort them too much to do things that they are not already doing. So you don't need floral foam. So first of all, you need to practice foam free. Now, just be aware there's a lot of products coming on the market right now, and I would urge you to please research them before hopping in and saying, oh, this is an eco-friendly version of foam. Um, I was recently looking into one and found out that it's simply not compostable, okay? So be aware when people tell you things are biodegradable because that does not mean that they are compostable, okay? If something takes 500 years to break down, some companies are still telling us it's biodegradable, okay? We want compostable products that we could just toss in the the compost pile um, and make a part of our ongoing kind of circular businesses, which I'll talk a little bit about later. So the number one thing you can do as a new florist is to work foam free. There are a lot of different solutions you don't need to be working with foam. Number two is to buy locally, okay? In the past and currently, flowers are shipped all over the world from Africa, South America, into the Netherlands, and then shipped out from the um, market or the auction there, and then gone into wholesalers. I mean, there are so many different middlemen, and the flowers travel so far. There is no reason to buy flowers from overseas. Please buy locally, okay? I know for me, I typically buy flowers almost always, but not always. I'm not 100% a purist and I'm not perfect, okay? But I try to buy flowers that were grown within kind of a 60 mile radius of where I live and work, okay? I also do a bit of foraging, but that is supplemental, okay? Foraging should not be your one and only source. We need to preserve our meadows and our landscape as well. Um, but buying locally and then foraging responsible are great ways to source your flowers. We have incredible flower farms right now who are growing organically and naturally, even if they are not organically certified, okay? Keep in mind that a lot of these flowers that were shipped in were dipped in pesticides, grown with horrible chemicals, and in fact, some of the laborers are suffering, phys suffering physical effects from those now. So buy local, buy naturally or organically grown, and educate your customers that they cannot have the pick of the world when it comes to flowers, okay? Let's educate our customers about what seasons mean, what grows naturally in our area, okay? We don't need to have everything in the world right now. <laughs> I think because of the internet, people think that they are entitled to have a peony in the middle of winter 
or you know roses of all colors in the middle of February and that is just not how nature works let's try to get back in touch with nature and again I don't want to shame or judge anyone because I feel that that will not make change so any incremental changes you can make if you're already a florist great um, if you're starting new, try to practice these big points that I'm talking about. Are right. your flowers locally and organically if possible? So do you have any questions so far? I would love to know if you are familiar with sustainable floristry, if it is something you are interested in, please let me know, pop a comment or question below. Okay, so onto the third point is composting. If you have already started working with flowers, you know that there's a lot of trimmings and a lot of green waste. Those absolutely need to be composted, okay? There's no way around it. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. If you have your own garden or you could return the compost to your flower farmer, there's a lot of different ways you could work with your city. Um, maybe your city already has a green waste program. Fabulous. Just make sure you're separating it out and you are not putting that compost in the garbage. And that leads me into the next point, which is to create a circular business. So basically it's common sense, okay? But it kind of means whatever we're taking and um, creating and sort of consuming, then we're putting back and reusing. And some of the biggest ways you can do that is to reuse your water from your buckets and water either your garden or someone else's to grow more flowers that then you'll be using in your business. And you don't have to be a farmer to do this, okay? Um, you can have just a small garden or you can work with a local gardener to help make this happen. Um, so that's a great way to save water. You can also, you know, capture rainwater to grow the flowers if you are um, growing some of your own ingredients. And then um, one of the other things is to compost, of course, and if you are growing more floral product from that compost, what a beautiful way to um, create a circular floral business. The other way is to also create compostable designs. So you're creating designs that will then just go back in the earth, educate your customers to compost everything when it is done. All right, and then any designs you're using for samples or photo shoots, you can toss those into your compost pile. If compostable arrangements are interesting to you and you're curious about le learning about my foam-free toolbox, you can join me for a workshop. It's a free demo and just a little talk where I'm opening up and sharing a little bit more about my sustainable practices. And just a disclaimer, I'm totally not perfect. I've been making incremental changes. While I've always loved naturalistic design and have gone that way, I have personally made mistakes in the past um, and I'm not always perfect, but I'm trying to make these incremental changes. And one of the biggest ways I feel I can make a difference is by helping the new florist I'm mentoring to know what sustainable floristry is. So if that is interesting to you, please join me for the workshop. I've popped the link in the description box below. And once you click that, you can sign up for the workshop with your name and your email. You can always subscribe. Um, you can always unsubscribe at any time. But I'd love to have you join me for the workshop. Uh, you don't need to bring anything to the workshop. I will mail you the downloadable notes um, a day or two after the workshop, so you have all of those, and you can sort of start implementing those sustainable practices into your home flower arranging or the business you are creating. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you do have any more questions, just pop your questions below and I will see you in the next video. And if you do join us for the workshop, I look forward to seeing you there.